How's it going, y'all? Um, so today I'm going to be talking about how to make some stylized grass. I really like this effect. It's a good way to fill out a lot of scenes and also add a lot of movement at the same time. Um, it's also pretty simple and shouldn't be too demanding on your computer. So let's go ahead and get started. First, what I'm going to do is just add in a curve and you want to select the path from the curve menu there. This is going to be our blade of grass. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're just going to shape this into a blade of grass. And one good way of doing that is to use a bezier circle. So I'll go ahead and add that in. I'm going to scale mine down just a little bit and then click back on the path and then go into the um, object data properties tab there. Click on geometry, go to bevel, do object, and then click on the little um, fill tool here or uh, eyedropper tool here and select the bezier circle next I'm just going to start scaling this down so we want to have a nice um, sharp pointy tip there at the tip of the, the grass blade and then everything else we can kind of scale down a little bit including at the very base there and then just grab one of the vertices and start wiggling them around so that we can get a little bit of a fun shape going on for the grass blade. And that is looking all right. Just a quick side note here, if you want to further adjust the shape of this blade of grass so it's not a perfect cylinder, you can just go into the Bezier circle, tab into edit mode, and then you can just start to move this around and it will copy whatever shape you're putting down. So if you wanted more of an insight here, um, you can just kind of scale and move this circle around and come up with your own shapes. So yeah, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and add in our surface that we're going to put the grass on. So I'm going to use a plane for that and just scale it up maybe three times there. Go over here to the particle properties, add in a new system, and I'm going to name this grass. Now we want to switch this to hair and then go down to render and change to render as object. Then you just wanna use the eyedropper tool and select this blade of grass. Now it is facing the wrong way there, of course, so we need to change our normals around. So for that, I'm just gonna rotate the uh, grass blade with RZ90, hit enter, and then do control A and apply rotation and scale. That way it is facing the correct direction. Now we just need to move the origin, which is this little orange dot here, to be just above the bottom of the base of the grass blade. So I'm gonna move this blade back a little bit and then tab into edit mode, hit A so you select the whole thing, and then G and Y, move it up, get it right above the base there. See how that's looking, nice. Cool, next we just wanna make this look like grass because right now they're all facing the same direction and the same height, all that stuff. So we just wanna randomize some stuff here. Um, go into advanced under the uh, hair particle settings and then click rotation. Then from there, you wanna add just a little bit of phase difference just so it's not at zero and then randomize phase. That way, um, I think it multiplies the phase against the randomize. So if it's at zero like this, it will all just be sitting there. So if you're having a hard time with this part, just move the phase up just a little bit. There you go. All right, next, just gonna up the scale a little bit and then do some scale randomness. So there's varying heights and, and whatnot in there. And that's honestly not looking bad. All right, so next what we wanna do is get a little movement in this scene. So a way I like to make it look like wind is just kind of blowing through the grass is to add in a turbulence force field. So I'll go ahead and add that in and you can see when you move it around, the grass will be dancing all around like that. So what I like to do is just go ahead and keyframe this so that it's constantly moving. So just go over here and hit I, move this up a little bit and then move, oops, don't do that. Then move the location, the X location up just a little bit. Hit I again. Um, go to interpolation mode by right clicking and then hit linear. And then with both of these points selected, hit Shift E 
and do linear extrapolation. And that will just keep it constantly moving in this direction for your entire scene. Um, so if later you decide you want to extend it a little bit, you don't need to worry about lining up the speed of this so this distortion is the same at all times. It will just keep going for you continuously. It's super useful. Um, definitely use that. <laughs> Uh, next I'm going to add in a wind force field because I kind of want my grass to be angled this way a little bit so it looks like there's a breeze it's kind of steadily blowing uh, into it. And you can see it helps to calm down the uh, turbulence just a little bit too so it's kind of a nice effect. I might up the strength on it just a little bit so it's really curved there. Yeah, that looks alright. Next we just want to play with some of the settings on the uh, force field. So you can see we have three major ones that I like to mess with, which are strength, size, and flow. Um, flow is really great for getting like a little bit more of that like breezy effect. You can see it like moving side to side here. Um, and then size will get super crazy really fast. Um, so this is just like the size of the, the uh, turbulence, I guess. So if you scale this up pretty big, it's good for making like an grass field where there's like portions of it that are all moving kind of together you can get like that nice whooshing effect like that um, I might turn the size down a little bit kind of going for something a little more chaotic here I want them all to kind of be moving individually so yeah just go and mess around with that just a little bit all right I think I found something I'm happy with I'm liking the look of this so now that we have this uh, basic particle simulation, let's go ahead and try and use it in a scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a uh, sky texture here. I'm going to switch into cycles and just tune this up real fast until I get something I like. Cool. Okay, I'm liking this. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is just modify this slightly. I'm going to add in a variation of grass. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this maybe two more times. And then just try and add a little variation to the shape of each one. What we're going to do is just instance this as a collection. So that there is just a little bit more variation. It's not super necessary. I think it still looks good, especially with there being so many of them, but um, it can be nice. Cool, now that their shapes are a little random, let's go ahead and assign some materials. Now that we have materials on them, let's go ahead and select all three of them. Right click, hit move to collection, new collection, and name this grass or whatever you want all right after you have your desired materials go ahead and click on the plane that we have the um, particle properties on go down to render change it from render as object to render as collection then under collection just select grass and now all of the variations that we made should be in there yeah that's looking pretty good i'm actually going to tone this one Actually, no, I like that one. I'm going to make these other ones a little richer, I think. Alright, I'm liking the look of that. Next, we can work on turning this into a bit of a scene. So, let's go ahead and add in a plane. Move it over just a bit. And then scale it up maybe 10 times. Actually, make it a little bit bigger than that. Right, and then just go into edit mode, subdivide it maybe five times there. And while you're in edit mode, make sure you have this proportional editing box ticked here. And hit three so that you're on faces. And then you can just start warping the terrain around. You can scroll up on your mouse wheel to make this proportional editing bigger. Um, and then just mess around until you get something that you like. Alright, once you have something that you like, go ahead and go into the particle properties, hit the plus sign, and then down here on this little drop down, select the first particle settings that we created. That'll load in the grass, but as you can see, it's a little sparse, it's not really filling out everything, it's pretty obvious that there's just a plane under it. So what I like to do is under these particle settings, scroll down, go to children, and then hit interpolated. 
and that's just going to add in a bunch more duplicates of this grass around it in like a spherical radius of the initial blade. Um, so this will bog down your computer a lot less than just cranking up the number of emissions here. Uh, so I like to use this method. One thing to look out for though is the render amount here. I think the default is at like 200 and that is just like a ton. I'll usually keep it around 20 or so just depending on the size um, and you know just like the setting of the scene. But um, yeah that's pretty much it. Let's go and see what this looks like. All right, yeah, I think this looks great. I'm really happy with uh, the density of the grass here and how it turned out. I think the, the force field is really working here. I like the flow of the grass. Um, so additionally, you could just use like a weight map or something if you wanted to control the density of the grass at certain areas. So you could make like a, a path here or something, but I'm, I'm assuming most people know how to do that. But if you don't and you would like a tutorial, just comment and let me know and I can put one of those out for you. So, yep, that pretty much wraps it for this tutorial, y'all. Um, quick shout out to my 21 subscribers that I have. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Y'all have definitely been very encouraging. So, uh, I appreciate the support. So, yep, let me know if you have any questions with this. And uh, good luck.